the story of Sri Lankan coffee. Our story begins in Rome. When Rome was first introduced to coffee, many clergymen had come to the Pope Clement VIII and said coffee is devil's drink. It should be banned. But after the Pope had a drink of coffee, he baptized coffee as a drink of Christians. In old Turkish tradition, when getting married, the husband must promise the wife that he will provide coffee daily to his wife. If he fails to provide coffee daily, the wife can legally divorce. In mid-80s, Sri Lanka was the world's best coffee producer. There are a few reasons why Sri Lanka produced the best tasting coffee in the world. One, Sri Lanka has the optimum environmental, climate, and soil conditions. Two, good agricultural practices carried out by Sri Lankan farmers. Three, Sri Lanka used better processing methods such as wet processing and all activities done under supervision of experts. Four, Sri Lanka cultivate coffee varieties such as Arabica and Robusta, which produce great tasting coffee. It is believed that the coffee was first introduced to Sri Lanka by the Arabs. Then the Portuguese and the Dutch cultivated coffee. The Golden Age was during the time when England ruled it. At that time, Sri Lanka exported over 100 million pounds worth of coffee to England. Most of Sri Lanka's trains, roads, and other infrastructure was constructed to transport coffee from upcountry to Colombo Fort. By 1840, coffee was highly popular around the world. Meanwhile, the Chinese introduced tea to the world. Tea gradually became popular in Europe and other places around the world. In 1870s, coffee rust spreads in many parts of the world, which made tea even more popular at this time. All the growers who were infected with coffee rust disease transferred to tea plantations. Sri Lanka became the best tea maker thanks to its climate and soil and exported more than 200 million kilograms and became the highest tea exporter in the world in 1965. Today, most of the coffee is produced in Brazil and the world consumes about 2.2 billion cups of coffee per day. It is the highest consumed drink next to water. How coffee is made in Sri Lanka The decision to make high-quality coffee starts with harvesting the best berries. Reddish-color coffee beans are the best to harvest. After harvesting, we put the coffee in clean water and remove the ones that float in the water because they are not full-grown. Then we use the coffee pulp machine to remove fruit cover of the coffee beans. After that, we place the coffee in a fermentation tank for 24 to 48 hours for process called fermentation. Then we wash the coffee well several times to remove the mucilage and dry them using a dryer or simply in sunlight. After drying, we call it parchment coffee, which can store until we remove its seed cover. Then the coffee can be roasted. The final taste of a cup of coffee is based on how good the roasting is. And that's the story of Sri Lankan coffee.